So gold, the, the reason why gold suck is because they're designed around gratification. They're not designed around fulfillment. And so you're always chasing them, right? And because you're always chasing them, there is never a sense of fulfillment that ha ever happens in this whole paradigm. Now, people who are listening to the call might go, but hey, Ajit, I, you can say that because you've got that success, right? Because that's usually the argument that I get is like, oh, Ajit, you can comment about that because you've already gotten there. But what I can say for sure is in the process of getting there or in the process when I did have goals, I realized still the way we design goals are kind of fundamentally wrong. And I want to talk a little bit about that in the paradigm shifts that we're going to go into next. All right, brilliant, mate. Well, yeah, let's, um, let's dive into that then and explain a little bit about, about what you believe and, and how you know, th this process could, could be improved. So here, here are the far, five paradigm shifts that I think will not only change the way you look at goals, but will also kind of give you a more effective way to achieve them. And, uh, and that's why I, sometimes I say goals suck, but I can tell you also how to get them every single time, uh, right? So the first thing, the first paradigm towards or understanding goals a little bit better is that goals are a mental construct, right? So what happens with most people is they think that their goal is X, Y, and that's like the ultimate. It becomes their ideal self. They, they could start to compare themselves if they're successful or they're unsuccessful based on the goal. Instead of saying that whatever the goal that has been designed or the goal that has been put out is simply a mental construct. It's not the truth. There is no true goal. There's only goal that you come up with and say, this is the goal. There is no real logic to it. You can put all science and math behind it, but there's no true logic which can, which can account for every moving fragment in the world and be able to say that this is a true goal and this is 100% achievable with mathematical accuracy. It's very few things that can be done that way. It's like not, unless you're launching a rocket that probably has a mathematical accuracy, will, it'll go up and will it crash, that kind of thing. But most of the goals that we set out has no mathematical bias and cannot have one because there are too many variables that play into the factor including the biggest variable, which is human emotion, which you have no control on because it changes based on where you are, how you are, what your society is, et cetera, et cetera, right? So each of our goal is a mental construct, right? So what is a good goal, what is a bad goal is depending on the person who wants to kind of go towards the goal. The reason why I give that as a paradigm shift that it's a mental construct is also because we need to disrupt this mental construct. Most of the goals are set in this way. What's my one-year goal? right? Or what's my three month goal? It's the worst way of setting goals. When we as human beings try to design goals for three months or six, three months or a year, what happens is we just bombard ourselves by saying it has 2000 items that I need to do in the next one year to get to my goal, which is an absorption. Most of most, a lot of times obnoxious growth rate of 700%, 600%, right? So when that happens, what happens is we've set ourselves up for massive failure Plus, we have discounted the fact that as human beings, if you are starting a business at 30, you are bound to at least do that business for 30 years if you actually damn liked it, right? Even if you thought you retired at 60. But what, what is our goal? A one-year goal. And what do we kill ourselves on? The one-year goal. And guess what is the worst timeline to set up a goal? Is the immediate future. Because the immediate future is where we just bombard 200 items instead of thinking, where do I want to be in three years, Right? The moment I get, give this exercise to my clients and I say, all right, you know what? Instead of thinking about your next year goal, let's think about where you would like to be as your ideal self in three years from now, all right? When you put out that thing of saying, this is where I would want to be in three years from now, and you reverse your logic by saying, okay, to get to where you need to get to three years, what do you need to get in the first year? The goals that they set for themselves in that context versus the goals that they set for themselves by simply saying, where do I want to be next year? Are completely different because when you set a goal for yourself just in context of the next 12 months you tend to over uh, over expect from yourself instead of when you put a three-year context you become a little bit more uh, kind to yourself because you kind of realize that if I want to get there in three years I actually don't need to do a billion things I just need to do these five right so it simplifies the goal so if you understand that Goal is just a mental construct and you can change it the way you want. And there is no real successful or failure goals. They're just your mental reality and how you reframe and frame them will define if you'll be successful or not. 
your result completely changes because you set yourself up for success. You see, success breeds success and failure breeds failure.